Hello everyone. In this video, we will look at how to find branch currents when running DC operating point simulations. This topic was actually suggested by a subscriber in one of the comments on a video in this channel. Although the topic of DC operating point simulations is covered in detail in other videos in this channel, I decided to do a video focusing on finding branch currents for the benefit of viewers. Recall that circuit simulators such as PySpice, LTSpice and PSpice are all based on node voltage method. Hence they need a circuit ground when simulating the circuit and they naturally and easily output node voltages. In order to get branch currents, there is additional functionality provided in the simulators. Let us see how this can be done in more detail. The process of finding the magnitude and direction of branch currents is actually the simplest in PSPICE. Consider this example circuit comprising one independent voltage source, one independent current source, and four resistors. We can simulate this circuit. Then we can enable bias voltage display to look at the node voltages and enable bias current display to look at the magnitudes of the branch currents. To find the branch current direction, we need to click the magnitude. This brings up a red arrow which indicates the direction of the particular branch current. For instance, in this case, through this resistor R4, the current is flowing in this direction. For this three, in this part of the circuit, the current is 3 amps and its direction is the same as the direction of the arrow in the current source symbol. In this branch, the 50 volt source and the 5 ohm resistor are in series. The same branch current is flowing through them. For the 20 ohm resistor, 1.368 amp current is flowing from left to right in this direction. On a Windows computer, we can press shift and then click multiple magnitude directions and this enables us to highlight multiple current directions simultaneously. It is easy to see that Kirchhoff's current law is valid at both these two essential nodes. Please pause the video now if you wish to study this in more detail. Next, let us consider the same circuit in LTSpice. When we simulate, we obtain the node voltages as well as the device or branch currents. The node voltages in this case are 50 volts, uh, 37.89 volts and 65.26 volts and these are the same as before. The branch current results are a bit confusing. Two branch currents are positive while the remaining are negative. Suppose we rotate resistor R3 and then we run the simulation again. Now we can see that the direction of the current through resistor R3 is reversed compared to before. So you might ask what is going on here and how can we use LTSpice to determine the direction of the branch currents. Let us see how to find the branch current directions in LTSpice. If we bring the cursor over the voltage source, the probe is enabled and we can see in the bottom left corner that the current is minus 2.42 amp. By convention, 
healthy spice gives the current flowing from the positive to the negative terminal of the voltage source. A current of minus 2.4 amps flowing in this direction means that in reality 2.42 amp current is flowing out of the positive terminal of the voltage source in this direction. For the current source, by default, the arrow in the symbol points in the direction from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. Hence, we can see that 3 ampere current is flowing from bottom to top in this direction. For the resistors, LT Spice does not show the plus and the minus terminals on the schematic. So there is no way of knowing which direction the current is actually flowing. To know for sure, we need to use an ammeter in LT Spice. Unfortunately, the ammeter part name is not available in LT Spice. Instead, we can use a zero volt magnitude ideal independent voltage source to act as an ammeter in LT Spice. Recall that an ideal independent voltage source is a circuit element that maintains a prescribed voltage V across its terminals regardless of the current I flowing in those terminals. This prescribed voltage can have a zero volt value. A zero volt magnitude ideal independent voltage source connected in series with the circuit element of interest does not disturb the original circuit and allows us to determine the branch current direction in LT spice. This is the same circuit with a zero volt test source connected in series with resistor R3. The orientation of the test voltage source does not matter in this case. When we simulate and bring the cursor over the test source to activate the probe, LT Spice tells us that there is a minus 1.368 ampere current flowing from the positive to the negative terminal of the test source in this direction. This value is displayed in the bottom left corner. Since this value is negative, this means that in reality 1.368 ampere current is flowing in this branch from left to right in this direction. This is the same result that we obtained in PSPICE. Let us now consider PSPICE. There are three main techniques which can be used to find branch currents in PSPICE. Similar to LT SPICE, we can use a zero volt ideal independent voltage source to act as an ammeter. We can also use the inbuilt add current probe command. Finally, the third option is that we can leverage the computation power of Python and circuit laws to find the branch currents using simulated values of node voltages. Let us see these three techniques in action. Consider the same circuit of interest. Suppose our objective is to determine the branch current through resistor R3. Then we can connect a zero volt test voltage source in series with resistor R3. The orientation of this test voltage source does not matter. Using descriptive node labeling, we can translate this circuit into a netlist as shown here. We are running an operating point simulation, which gives us the DC values. These commands here give us the branch currents in all voltage sources present in the circuit. When we run this code, the result is shown here. PySpice tells us that the current flowing from the positive 
to the negative terminal of voltage source V1 is minus 2.42 amps. The negative value means that in reality current is flowing in the opposite direction. So current in this branch is flowing in this direction. Similarly, PySpice tells us that for the test voltage source, minus 1.368 amp current is flowing from the positive to the negative terminal of the test voltage source. This means that in reality, 1.368 amp current is flowing through resistor R3 from node 3 to node 2. This method is particularly useful if we are interested in a particular branch current in any given circuit. Suppose we are interested in finding the branch currents through all the resistors in this circuit of interest. For this we can use method 2 which is related to the add current probe command. Using descriptive node labeling, as before, we can translate the circuit into a netlist. Using the command syntax shown here, we can add a current probe to all the resistors in the circuit. We can do this using a resistance plus add current probe command or a resistance minus add current probe command. Here we are using the resistance plus add current probe command. This behaves as follows. Resistor R1 is connected between nodes 1 and 2. Resistance plus add current probe command will automatically add a 0 volt test voltage source in series with R1 with the positive terminal connected to the first node, which is node 1 in this case. Similarly, for the other resistors, as shown here. Please pause the video now if you wish to study this in more detail. When we run this code, we get the branch currents in all the resistors in addition to the voltage, the currents through the voltage source. The results are shown here. We can now interpret the results to determine the branch current directions. For resistor R1, the branch current is 2.42 amps and is flowing from the positive to the negative terminal in this direction. This Thus, the current direction is as marked. For resistor R2, the branch current is 3.789 amps and is flowing from the positive to the negative terminal. So that means the direction of branch current in R2 is as marked. For resistor R4, the branch current is 1.632 amps and this is flowing from the positive to the negative terminal in this direction. Thus the current direction through R4 is as marked. Finally for resistor R3, the current is minus 1.368 amp and is flowing from the positive to the negative terminal in this direction. The negative sign means that in reality the current is flowing in the opposite direction. Thus the direction of current through R3 is as marked and this has magnitude 1.368 amps. If we were to use the resistance dot minus dot add current probe command then the polarity of these reference voltage sources would be reversed and we would need to adjust our interpretation accordingly. Finally, let's look at the third method which leverages the unique computation power of Python 
compared to other circuit simulators. Here we translate the circuit into a netlist as before. Instead of trying to find the branch currents, we use the simulated values of the node voltages and Ohm's law to find the simulated branch currents. The directions of the branch currents is already accounted for in the calculations. For instance, for resistor R3, this branch current I3 in this direction is given by voltage at node 3 minus voltage at node 2 divided by resistance R3. These commands here allow us to find the branch currents using the simulated values of the node voltages. When we simulate, we get the values as expected. Please pause the video now if you wish to study this syntax in more detail. The Python codes discussed in this video for the three different methods to find the branch currents are posted in the video description below. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any suggestions for future video topics, please post them in the comments section.